Good morning. Welcome to St. James Catholic Church. And blessed Easter to everyone. Our readings for this Mass may be found in the hymnal at 1079. That's 1079. Now please stand as we sing our opening hymn, number 516, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, 516. Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia, our triumphant holy day, alleluia. Well, did once upon the cross, And let us sing, Alleluia, unto Christ our heavenly King, Alleluia, who endured the cross and grave, Alleluia, sinners to redeem and save. Alleluia. But the pains which he endured, Alleluia, our salvation have procured. Alleluia. Above the sky he's king, alleluia. Father, angels ever sing, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Happy Easter to everyone. Alleluia, the Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. This morning, in the fog, we made it to church knowing that the sun is shining bright. And it will shine through the fog as it has already shined through the darkness. And the fog in our hearts was so clear. And we're ever reminded this morning that God is great. And sometimes the darkness of our heart is just a sleepiness of our heart like on an 8 o'clock Mass on Sunday morning. <laughs> May the power of the resurrection awaken our hearts to the greatness and the goodness of God. We now call to mind those times when we've been a little sleepy. Our sins and our omissions, we ask for his forgiveness and for the glory of his resurrection to shine into our hearts. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, raise us up to the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one anointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Christians praise the Paschal Victim, offer thankful sacrifice. Christ the Lamb has saved the sheep, Christ the Just One paid the price, reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and life fought bitterly for this wondrous victory. The Lord of life who died 
reigns glorified. O Mary, come and save what you saw at break of day. The empty tomb of thy living Lord, I saw Christ Jesus risen and adored. Bright angels testified, shroud and grave clothed side by side. Yes, Christ, my hope, rose gloriously. He goes before you into Galilee. Share the good news, sing joyfully. His death is victory. Lord Jesus, Victor King, show us mercy. Amen. Alleluia. Our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what was said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day and they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles, but their stories seemed like nonsense and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb bent down and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home amazed at what happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning and happy Easter, blessed Easter to everyone this morning. After the resurrection, 
the very first words uttered by the risen Christ was in the form of a question. His question begins with, why? He will appear to St. Mary Magdalene and ask her, woman, why are you weeping? It's similar to other questions we have heard from him, from the Holy Cross we heard on Good Friday, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Over the course of the year in the temple with the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? The angels in the empty tomb seemed to pick up on asking good questions. As they questioned the women from Galilee who have gone to the tomb, why? Why do you seek the living one among the dead? No one can answer his question. No one can answer because there is not a human answer. On their behalf, there is just mysterious silence. But after the resurrection, the risen Lord answers. And he answers by calling St. Mary Magdalene's name when he is with her in the garden, Mary, Mary, I have called you by name and you are mine. And only then when he calls her by name, Mary, does she recognize Jesus Christ, the risen one, when he called her by name and claimed her as his own. And he says the same to us. You were called by name at your baptism. What name have you given your child? You were called by name at your confirmation. Reverend Father, my name is Thomas. I wish to be confirmed. You were called by name at your marriage. I, Madison, take you read to be my wife. I read, take you, Madison, to be my husband. I was called by name at my ordination. Those to be ordained, please come forward. Martin Allen, Lineback, present. Joseph Scott Murphy, present. I have called you by name, and you are mine. So do not be afraid anymore. Jesus tells us, why, why not be afraid? Because my resurrection is yours. My victory is yours. It does not just belong to me. In that sharing of the victory is the very power of this Easter Sunday. We have not witnessed the power of God and the mystery of our faith and the victory of the resurrection in the events in Paris this past week. I can't believe that it is a coincidence that the Cathedral Basilica of Notre Dame burned at the beginning of Holy Week. I believe Christ is asking yet another question that begins with why, why, especially Europe, why have you turned away from me, why have you forgotten me, why do you seek the living among the dead? Many French Catholics say the fires that engulfed Notre Dame may have also set off a spiritual spark, 
especially in young people. So perhaps there is another victory. We ask why, and Christ answers on this Easter Sunday morning. I will send yet again witnesses, witnesses to a tomb that seems to be burning, witnesses to save a cross. I'm sure you've seen the photographs from all of the flames surrounding it. For the priest who ran in to save the crown of thorns, the windows that were protected, that reflect the beauty of my love for you, and perhaps most importantly, the priest who went in to rescue my body from the tabernacle, not unlike those who took me down from the cross in honor reverence, and adoration of my crucified body. Why? What is decisive is the knowledge that Jesus Christ the groom will never abandon his bride, the church, which does not mean that her faithfulness will never be tested. The temple on Mount Zion was destroyed, rebuilt, and destroyed again. St. Peter's in Rome was plundered more than once. The Crusaders eventually lost Jerusalem. But what ultimately matters is not so much brick and stone, but to share in the resurrection and victory of Christ, the Son of God, which remains forever fertile and will forever save those who long for it. There is nothing to fear. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. This man God raised on the third day and granted he, he be visible not to all people but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance. So this morning, let this place resound with joy. Praise be Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, now and forever. Amen. Last night, there was a large group. I lost count of exactly how many. 24. 24 of our prisoners, of our family here at St. James, who received the sacraments of baptism and of confirmation and of First Holy Communion. As part of that ceremony, they made their vows or renewed their vows of baptism. We now recall that day, perhaps most of us don't remember, when we were first accepted the life of God in our souls at baptism. When in the very powerful sacramental way, the light of Christ entered into our hearts. We renew that this morning by renewing our own baptismal promises and remembering with the sprinkling of the holy water, that water which washed our sins and began new life. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery we have been born, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him 
and the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? I do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator? heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by the water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us in his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. From the temple, from the right side, from the right side, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. We gather today to celebrate the victory of God's Son over darkness. We bring our prayers to the one who gave him to us. For all who lead our church, that the risen Jesus may continue to transform their hearts and lives 
according to his perfect will. Let us pray to the Lord. For political leaders around the world, that Christ's sacrificial love may inspire them in crafting policies and laws that protect the dignity and the sanctity of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick, the suffering, and the marginalized, that the saving power of the risen Jesus may heal them and comfort them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this community of faith, the Lord may inspire us as a resurrection people who with our lives praise God for all that he has done. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have died, may they enjoy the fullness of life in the risen Christ. Particularly we pray for Pete and Patrick Riley, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God our Father, we bring you these prayers today, trusting that your power, which overcame death itself, can overcome any darkness in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our operatory hymn is 511, The Strife is O'er, 511. Which wounded you, 
me from that steam your servants do, that we may live and sing to you. strife is o'er, the battle done. Now is the victor's triumph won. Songs of rejoicing have begun. Alleluia! Alleluia! Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exult and with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world together with 
your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal, true God, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God our Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Celebrating that most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially with the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be, be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give new birth and water in the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command what we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every, in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with his eyes raised to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to, pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, and in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him, you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Throw him with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. to the Lord. 
Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us share in the Communion hymn will be 953, Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Ah, the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. 
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, in unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look for the final blessing. If I may, just re-echo these beautiful words of our pastor, Father Martin, this morning. The why that we go away with the re-echoing in our hearts very clear of the motives, what moves us to praise together as a community of faith centered on Christ. Love. His love for us and our love for him. May these motives re-echo in your hearts. Happy Easter to you all. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May, all God, may Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion, and compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Our recessional hymn is 496, Christ the Lord is risen today, 496. Christ the Lord is risen today. Oh. Uh.